So basically I want to show you how to make your own spyware, right? So basically what I've done is I've created a screenshot grabber. I was going to create a keylogger in the first place, but the thing is everyone has created a screenshot, uh, sorry, a keylogger. But no, I don't think a lot of people have created a screenshot grabber, at least I have not seen anybody. Plus also this program is very, very well to learn. It's a good program to learn from because basically if you go through the code, if you go through it bit by bit, it allows you to learn a bit of Python, right? And you don't really need to be some professional coder or programmer to learn Python. Python is very, very simple. Right, so if we go to basically uh, there, Python, and we come to Screen Grabber, uh, I'm just gonna launch this. Now, to basically edit this or launch this, uh, you need pip and Python and VS Code, right? I'm gonna, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to compile this. So compiling means basically creating an exe file, right? Now, if you're on Linux, you can launch this through your terminal. However, I haven't tested this f um, when it comes to, when it comes to um, Linux, it's only on Windows, so I don't know if it works. It should work, I'm not really sure, right? I've made this for, uh, for Windows and I've made it in Windows, right? So basically this is um, the code. So we have basically the, the functions, importing the functions. And what this does, it basically creates a directory um, called image. If the directory is not created, if it doesn't exist, it will create it for you. Um, and it will create it for you, right? So going down, basically what it does, it takes a screenshot. So um, the, the screenshot is dated, uh, the name of the file will be with the date. So if your current date of your system is whatever, it'll be dated with that time, right? Of the system, it's not, doesn't make any, doesn't make any calls to the internet, doesn't get it, right? So if it's, lo it's local. It takes the screenshot, um, it prints in the console that the screenshot has been taken. It goes through the file path, so it goes into slash image and it basically gets the screenshot with the time. It saves it into the file path and it prints the screenshot has been saved and basically what it does every 10 seconds, it does a screenshot and it basically will go forever, right? As long as the program's running, as long as the script or this, uh, if you compile it, as long as the exe will be running, it'll run forever, right? And that's it basically, right? So I'm gonna show you how this works. So if I go just start debug Python debugger Python file, uh, we're gonna go to the, the folder, right? As you can see, what has happened is it gave us the output. So I guess uh, output the DI, DIR created as it didn't exist. And I say screenshot taken, screenshot saved, right? Now, this is important. The reason I have this is just in case something um, Fs up, it is important that you do print because this allows you to debug stuff, right? Because what happens is I had a um, first one I programmed this, I said screenshot taken, but I never saved it, right? Or no, sorry, it, it, it took the screenshot, but I never saved it, right? So you know where the problem <clears throat> problem is and you know where the how to fix it, right? So you also know where to fix it. So it's important that you do either console debug, whatever, and then you do print. I think console debugs for JavaScript. I might have mixed something up, right? Um, and obviously, as you can see, it runs forever. So this is the what well, this will never stop. This will run forever. Um, so you have to stop it manually, right? So if you come to the folder, slash image, and as you can see, it took um, every 10 seconds. So um, we have six screenshots, which means it was a minute. So now what it does, as you can see, it grabs the whole, basically, the whole screen, the whole screen, right? So as you can see, it grabs from screen, uh, from the right corner to the left corner, right? So anything within the resolution, it will grab, right? So as you can see, I had a folder um, right here. I had a folder here. And as you can see, it grabs it. Now, I'm on a virtual machine, right? And because this is isolated, it won't grab my virtual machine. Uh, sorry, my host system, right? It won't grab it. However, if I was to run this on my host system and I was to run a virtual machine, it will grab the whole screen, including the virtual machine and the host system, right? Now, how to run this, because you may not know. Right, what we need to do is um, on Windows, it's pretty simple. What we need to do is just come to the folder. I recommend getting a completely simp a new folder for this. So come to the folder, launch your CMD. Right, so just need to go securing grabber. And to launch this, you need to type in dir to make sure you're in the right directory. And as you can see, we have requirements.txt. All you need to do is just type in pip install uh, hyphen r requirements.txt. So just like any Python. So just like any Python program, 
uh, it will install all the dependencies required for the program to run, right? As soon as it runs, you should have no problems. Um, make sure that everything's up to date, make sure your Python's up to date and make sure your VS code is up to date. So there's no problems and stuff. Um, and that's it, right? Once you install it, all you need to do is just come to the VS code and you can run it, sort of start debugging, right? Or you can, I'm pretty sure you can run it from, um, if I just run it, what's the Python 3? Can grab, right? Right, um, it doesn't work. I don't, I'm not really sure because I don't really launch Python programs on Windows. Um, but it will, it, this would work on Linux, right? This would absolutely work on Linux. What if I, if, what if I did Python? There we go. Oh, sorry. You don't need to do Python 3. You need to do Python 3 on Linux, but you don't need to do it on Windows. So if you just launch um, Python, I should, 10 seconds, should get, take another screenshot. There we go. So take another screenshot. Um, as you can see, this is another screenshot that I took. So we can zoom in, we can see exactly what's happening on the uh, on the on the screen so we can spy on people as we wish, right? Now obviously this is local, this is a local file, so this will not send any files to any FTP server or or uh, host it on the internet somewhere or it'll create its own hosting. No. If you want to do that, you can create it yourself, but remember to do it on your own computer, you're not allowed to send it to anybody else and launch it without their permission, right? As I said, this is a local screen grabber. If you want to, you can make it to, to send it to, to someone else. I might make a remote one, which is very, very simple because what we need to do is just send a file to an FTP server and it'll be hosted there, right? So very, very simple to do. Now, to create a Py um, at exe file, you need Py installer. I'll show you how to do this in a second. Now, to compile this into a basically exe so you can run it just with a simple program, all we need to do is type in pip install py installer, which basically is another program that allows us to make exe files from simple Python scripts, right? Now, make sure you're in the, the folder with the file, right? This is very important because if you're not, then unless you give an absolute path, this is a absolute path, right? I just um, try to look, for example, this is a absolute path, right? So absolute path is from basically from the root. So in Windows, the root is C, user, skill kit, update, a local programs, Python, Python, right? That's the absolute pathing, right? Whereas uh, local pathing is directly, right? So we're going to use local path. And in this case, we're just going to do py installer. And we're going to name the file. So the, pa the, the file is called screen grabber. And we're just going to put hyphen, hyphen, one file. Now it is important that you do one file as this makes everything easier, right? So if you just let this run, it might take a second as it, it takes, I don't know why it takes, it takes a bit longer. It's a very, very small code, but it takes a bit of time to do. Right, so I'm just gonna come back to you guys as soon as this is done. Right, so it's done. Um, now all you need to do, as you can see, we have some um, extra files. What you're interested is in, you're interested in dist. Um, I don't know what, I guess it means distribution. I don't really know what it stands for. Or you're interested in this, right? So this is your exe file, right? So if you put it in your desktop, what this will do, it, this will basically create um, an image folder on my desktop um, in a second. There we go, right? So as you can see, I just created a folder and it's just gonna run forever, right? So this is how you can simply, simply create a exe file and a simple Python script that is basically spyware, malware, whatever you wanna call it. Right, and yeah, that's all. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to check out my other videos, which will be in the description below. Also, it should be in a playlist. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me on Twitter. I always respond. Don't forget to check out my other videos. I have plenty of resources for you to learn from regarding cybersecurity, ethical hacking, and anything you can really think of. I have a video on 